Jim Raines, a member of the Lawrence D. Miles Value Foundation Board of Directors. The Miles Value Foundation is a nonprofit organization that works to innovate, educate, and advocate the value methodology technique created by Larry Miles. Since you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you are somewhat familiar with Larry Miles. During Larry's life, he was an amazing inspiration to many people. I was fortunate to meet Larry in April 1984 in one of his final public speaking engagements held in Dayton, Ohio. Larry passed away on August 1st, 1985. As you might imagine, since Larry passed away now over 30 years ago, many of the people that he inspired are also no longer with us. While I really did not know Larry, and he did not know me, we are fortunate to still have others with us that did know Larry and were inspired directly by him. Thus the idea to make this video title, A Tribute to Larry Miles, was born in an effort to capture from people that are still alive some of the more personal feelings that they have for Larry. As it turns out, we've lost many value engineering pioneers. In the past several months, including some who agreed to be videoed, but were not. Fortunately, we were able to capture the thoughts of two folks before they passed on, so their story is still alive. Each of the VE pioneers interviewed for this production were asked the same set of questions. The questions were designed for us to learn firsthand what type of person Larry was and how he worked with and treated people. You can learn more about how he inspired people by reading this book, Recollections which is now available as an ebook. So, please sit back and enjoy our tribute to Larry Miles. I met Larry in Chicago in 1981, and later my wife uh, also met him. And uh, Larry came back in 1983 for the SAVE International Conference, and I was a designated chauffeur, and I drove him around. That gave me uh, a lot more one-on-one -on -one time valuable time that I was able to spend with him. And I was thinking that I'm exchanging my experience with him. Uh, looking back later, it's basically a learning experience. Uh, the Dallas chapter of SAVE hosted the 1980 conference in Dallas, and uh, Larry and Eleanor Miles uh, both attended. And uh, that was my first time to meet Larry. Well, I met him at a um uh, national Capital Chapter Meeting. Uh, he used to invite the chapter out every summer uh, to his home in Easton. And so we would go out there and I met him and he was very hospitable, he and Eleanor. At a board meeting that was held at his and Eleanor's home, Sedgefield, in Eastern Maryland back around 1979 or 80. They used to host board meetings every fall and uh, I was one of the lucky ones who got to go there. I uh, got into the field in, in uh, 1964 uh, uh, and I was working for Ford as a value engineer and they sent me to the, my first SAVE conference which happened to be in Miami Beach. I can remember they had the conference at the Dorrell and uh, Larry was one of the keynote speakers at that conference and until that time I really had never met the man. I'd heard about the man by his reputation, but I'd never met him. Well, the first time I met uh, Larry in England, because he invited me to go to England to stay with him for one month and go to the different plants of GE at that time. And uh, he asked me to participate in seminars and all that and workshops. And that's uh, how I met him. It was the very first planning meeting of SAVE in uh, the Chain Bridge Hotel in Washington, D.C. And what was, what was your impression of him? He was very uh, intent on uh, function, function analysis, the discipline. Um, he was also very compassionate and encouraging of people. Larry was one of those people who, uh, when you walked into his home, you felt like you had just gotten home. From the very first moment I met him and his wife, Eleanor, for that matter, they were just incredibly comfortable, welcoming, warm people. My first impression was that he's a, a very sophisticated man. He, he 
uh, and he was very open, very friendly. He was a, a very uh, impressionable guy, just uh, interesting to be around and uh, just a people person. How, how did your impression change over time of Larry? Really, you know, um, that question came up a few times. Uh, to me, I had the first and best impression to start with because that's him. He can, you know, you spend five minutes with him, he knows who he is, what he does, and so forth. It never changed. He, he, he was always that way and uh, always very warm, invigorating person, you know, to be around. My impressions were positive from the very get-go, from the very beginning, and they got nothing but better after that, uh, just only because I got to know him better as a person. What's your fondest memory of Larry? Larry, the fondest memory, it's kind of a little sad in a sense, and what I found about Larry is, if he says something, he does it. And, uh, 19, you know, my year's kind of a little foggy, but I think in 1985, either a few weeks or a, a couple of months before, he, was, uh, he promised to respond to something I did. I got a letter, it was not signed by him, Eleanor signed for Larry, it was typed. He was uh, in his deathbed, and even at that time, he wanted to be sure that I, he responded to my letter. And that's really, at that time it was like a sad thing, but looking back, it's a, how a great man he is to, you know, with all the pain and everything he had, this is also important to him. So what is the single character, character attribute you feel best describes Larry? Uh, I think he, well, he was extremely creative, uh, very open-minded, friendly, uh, and uh, you could ask him anything and uh, he would always give you answers, so he was always very helpful. Yeah. Well, I've mentioned his humility once. I mean, he, he truly, I don't think, actually realized what he had done for society when he developed the VA process. He was totally dedicated to value and analysis and also to all the people who practiced it. He was very humble. I think it was his uh, kindness and openness and his uh, willing to listen. Can you tell us your best Larry story? The, probably the best, the other best Larry story would be that when we went to Sedgefield for the board meetings, it was a weekend event. Uh, we would all stay in a, a small motel in, in Easton or St. Michael's. We would go to the Sedgefield place and, and uh, at the end of the first full day on Friday evening, Eleanor would have cooked dinner for all of us. And, and there was a rule there. You were not allowed in the kitchen. It was a very tiny kitchen. But that woman put out a spread unlike any you could imagine. Um, just spectacular food. It was the first, first place I ever had uh, soft shell crab. But we would eat out on their patio, which was, by the way, a patio that Larry and Eleanor built themselves, brick by brick. And probably my favorite part of that story was that as they would finish a section, they would um, have a drink and then dance on it at the end of the day. So what did Larry do to help you personally? It's personally, it, it's really that uh, if somebody suggests anything to you, uh, don't get offended. You keep on, that's a chance to improve yourself. Yeah, uh, it was encouragement. I think that's the, the key word. Uh, as we would talk, he recognized that I was new in the profession and as time went on, I got to know him better and I got to know the, the discipline much better. I started to experience some successes personally in the field. and uh, He guided me into the career of value analysis, value engineering, by uh, personally uh, mentoring me. What he did help, help me personally is, is the fact he believed, and I could see it in his eyes, he believed that I could do value engineering. He saw the potential and the possibilities, and uh, it, that, that had a profound impact on my decision to uh, pursue the, the value engineering profession. He encouraged me to stay uh, active in value analysis. And that was, that was important because it, you know, back then it was quite a man's world. And SAVE was maybe a perfect picture of the man's world. It was 
uh, as they said at the time, it was a good old boy society. So it was a little tough to break through some of those barriers, but Larry was, and, and his wife Eleanor too, were, they were just absolutely inspirational uh, of my path into the VA world. Why do you think function-oriented thinking works so well? Well, that's easy because it expands your mind. I mean, it, it, it gets you to think about new things in new ways. I think because by running function-oriented thinking, you don't limit the possibilities uh, by which you could perform these functions. Because normally people look at solutions and try to uh, uh, get cost reduction on a certain solution. But looking at the functions uh, means that you are opening the way, you're forgetting about the existing situation, and from there on you're only talking about functions, and you are looking for different solutions. How could we perform the functions? I think that is the main thing. And that was also the big invention that he made at that time. Because it takes, out, takes the emotion out of the conversation. It keeps people focused on the subject matter as opposed to each other's personalities or preferences. Well, it's, it's to me, it's the only process that clearly identifies the root cause of any problem or any situation that you want to resolve. Well, I think if you really cut through the chase and all the things that surround the discipline, it's, it's, it's the organized problem-solving system that's based around function analysis that made it work. It was logical, it was well thought out, uh, it was a, a system of thinking that allowed you to truly analyze where you were, what some of the parameters were, look at the various options, you know, look at a lot of alternatives, and come to a meaningful conclusion, not in, only in the terms of cost, but as you begin to think about performance and delivery and all the other quality aspects of the project you might be working on. Again, I had to quote Larry. He said, function is really the reason why you do things. If you don't know the reason, and if you have the wrong reason, you end up in the wrong way. Function-oriented thinking works so well because it unlocks the power of creativity in individuals. And I've seen this over and over again through study after study, that when you get into the function logic, functions and function logic, you see a tremendous amount of creativity begin to open up. And uh, even with uh, teams with older generations, you'll see people begin to think creatively. And so the power of the, the power of creativity that is brought on by function, function thinking, I think is one of the most uh, uh, significant aspects of, of what we do. What do you think Larry would say about the state of the profession today? You know, that's a mixed uh, feeling about it in one way. You know, it's kind of a, if I'm in an optimistic mode, one thing, and a pessimistic mode. But in, it, optimistic is that it is, we're all trying. I think he would be proud of that we're still trying. I think he, he would be a little, I think, disappointed it didn't grow as much as it should because he spent time in Japan and doing a lot of things on his own. But if you look at what he has accomplished and take the today's leaders of 2030, I don't think we have done enough. But knowing him, he may still be very polite about it, but I, I wish we could do more. And I want to think that way. That's the only way we can improve our system. Well, I think you'd be proud in the progress that the value engineering field uh, has contributed to the overall success of not only what we're doing here in this nation, but as other companies and other organizations and other worlds and other, excuse me, and other nations are accomplishing. I think he would be very happy that we have, we have certainly perpetuated it and I think he would be happy to see that we are embracing other uh, value enhancing methods and tools. Um, I don't think uh, Larry ever intended or, or uh, thought that uh, uh, we would not innovate some additional tools and techniques. I think that's the other thing he, he was uh, encouraging to, to do and, and he did mention fast diagramming and Charles by the way uh, and so he was encouraging that we would continue to grow and I think he would be very happy to see the kinds of things that we're doing uh, both within the society and, and around the world. I think Larry would be thrilled that it has uh, expanded to the areas that it has and especially to the countries to think when he was alive that there would be VE in China or VA in China. I, you know, Larry always said he didn't, I don't care what you call, call it as long as you use it. 
I think he would say, well, we have to freshen up a little bit. We have to put in more inspiration. We would have to uh, laugh more, have more fun, and, and you know, that because that's part of the game. I'm sure he would say that because we always had a lot of fun. And he said, well, if you want to be very uh, good in your profession, you must also know how to laugh. That's good advice. Um, so, of all the many quotes that, that Larry has, uh, has spoke, uh, do you have one that stands out as your favorite? Uh, yeah, I, I could say, well, he always said, uh, we have to look for alternatives. There are always alternatives somewhere around. But they don't show up if you don't look for them. So that's, that's. And he always say, value engineering does not solve problems. It only show possibilities. He used to tell me, he says, no matter what you decide to do, he says, you will be successful at whatever you wish to do, as long as you don't care. Who gets the credit? Well, that's one that I heard from him quite often. He said, you know, all cost is for function. He said, uh, people want to eat fish and not bait a hook. If I can't have the product, how do I get the function? Uh, his favorite one that I remember is that he always kept saying that there are no problems, only opportunity. If you had to give a speech honoring Larry Miles, what are the top two or three points you would make? It's basically the, the reasons why you are doing it and be satisfied with the uh, you know, possibilities they have shown. Uh, the top two or three points I make is that uh, I talk about his kindness and then I talk about his positive attitude and thinking. He, he would always say, the glass is half full and not half empty. He was a real innovative thinker. Well, he was, he was truly a people's man. And whenever you, whenever you spoke to him, he made you feel that you're the most important person in the room at that time. I think um, I would make the point that Larry inspired everybody he spoke to in one way or another. I would make the point that he was one of the most humble people I ever knew. He gave the world a gift and didn't realize it. And I would make the point that he just had an innate, abil innate ability to make you feel so good about yourself that were he alive today, value analysis would probably be even bigger than it is. Mm -hmm.